back at it like i said basically a daily event at this point not only embarrassing herself but especially embarrassing those that have um been defending her this whole time you know what i'm saying uh really not a position that i am envious of at all so uh, let's get into this latest one. Uh, actually, I want to start with this because we were talking a little bit about her segment on Fox News the other day on Tucker Carlson's show in which she quite disgustingly um, and embarrassingly defended the drone strike programs, which literally just killed 10 people in Afghanistan, murdered 10 people, and was recently exposed by Daniel Hale that uh, they have a 90% civilian death rate, as we all expected. So, you know, pretty crazy hill to die on, if you ask me. Not really something I would want to be um, simping for, especially as someone who'd previously branded themselves anti-war voice or figure, whatever. Um, so, yeah, totally embarrassing. But uh, some of her biggest defenders from the past, people that have, in fact, you know, been uh, supporters of hers and uh, went to bat for her, um, are even coming around now uh, in pretty big mass numbers and admitting that she's been just totally screwing the pooch when it comes to these recent statements, totally, you know, uh, embarrassing any former no any former notions that they once had of her being this anti-war crusader, et cetera. But I wanted to get into Kim Iverson in specific. I don't know how much you know about Kim Iverson, Zach, or if you have any opinions on her, but I generally really like Kim Iverson's commentary. I think she's a good faith voice. I really find her to be a nuanced thinker and a reasonable, rational, uh, heterodox kind of lefty voice. Um, so for that reason, I was actually really interested to see her take on this matter, being that she was a supporter of Tulsi Gabbard's from back in the day, you know, a, a presidential campaign supporter, et cetera. Um, and I, and she recently put out a video, you know, addressing this matter after the, the Tucker Carlson appearance. So uh, I wanted to take a look at this and see what you thought about it, uh, Zach, because I thought she actually did a really good job breaking down the situation. Tulsi Gabbard made an appearance on Tucker Carlson's show Monday, where she talked about Islamists being the biggest threat facing the nation today. Also on September 11th, Tulsi posted to Twitter, quote, let us never forget that it was the Islamist ideology which inspired the terrorist attacks and declaration of war against America on 9-11. And it is this Islamist ideology that continues to fuel terrorist attacks around the world and is the foundation for so-called Islamic countries like Pakistan, Turkey, Iran, and Saudi Arabia's discriminatory policies against Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, etc." All right, so let's go ahead and unpack all of this. Um, first of all, I did reach out to Tulsi Gabbard. I invited her to be on this show to discuss her um, her involvement in these over-the-horizon targeted attacks against Islamists in her assertion that Islamist ideology is the greatest threat facing America today. Um, I have reached out to her. I did not hear back, but the invitation still stands. So if she would like to come on this show or at least issue a statement, um, she is absolutely more than welcome to. Now, I also want to point you to a radar that I did recently on Hills Rising. As you know, I've been co-hosting the show um, for the last seven weeks. I did take this week off from the show. Um, but I did do a, a radar that I think you should watch uh, talking about how the war is not really over in Afghanistan, that Joe Biden is shifting his focus to targeted attacks, what they're called over the horizon targeted attacks, and I detail exactly how this new form of warfare came about. But I will, of course, go through some of that here with you now, but uh, I do have more sources and, and details in that radar that you could check, and that is on, on a playlist on my channel down below. So. Listen, uh, intervention warfare, as far as boots on the ground, swarming a, a country with an invasion, that is old form of warfare that really no one is discussing doing anymore, be, be they Republican or be they Democrat. They might posture a little bit. You know, you might get Marco Rubio here and there saying, oh, yeah, we're going to invade Venezuela. We're going to invade Iran. But for the most part, no one actually in the Department of Defense and no one really in the military industrial complex is thinking that that's the future of warfare for America. Everyone has shifted towards this new idea of over the horizon targeted attacks. And what makes these particularly very scary is they don't actually require a declaration of war. It is just the president using the old AUMF that allows them to strike and, and attack and use um, warlike tactics against areas, nations, regions, so as long as they're able to 
uh, justify it as fighting terrorism. So as long as they can link it to terrorism, they're allowed to be anywhere in the world fighting in these targeted sorts of special ops warfare, drone warfare, without the American people really being none the, were any the wiser. So we saw this happen in Somalia when we had um, soldiers killed and we were like, what in the world? We didn't even know where they were there. This is that sort of new form of warfare. Now, this was interestingly crafted mostly under Barack Obama, this new shift in warfare and very specifically alongside Hillary Clinton. This is what makes this particularly really interesting that Tulsi Gabbard is now advocating and even participating in a form of warfare that is very much the foreign policy, um, the foreign policy agenda of, believe it or not, Hillary Clinton. So, so I want to watch some more of this because it gets even better. But I just want to break in to mention that, you know, to echo what she's saying about drone warfare being the new face of imperialism and um, militarism abroad for America. Um, but it's also quite um, problematic because there's very little visibility of these wars going on, at least domestically, when they're done via these drone strikes and kind of these remote operations. Um, you know, not that it's at all a good thing for American soldiers to be coming home in flag draped caskets, but at least it does, um, you know, show the rest of us here at home the costs of war. At least it makes the costs of our intervention abroad visible to your average family, uh, because of course those effects are going to ripple throughout communities when people lose their sons, daughters, etc. in war. Again, that's not a good thing, um, but without even that, when all of these attacks are just being you know, carried out via drones and from remote locations, um, then there's really even less visibility of these wars. The American public can even easier it can even easier just tune it all out and pretend it's not happening because the media barely reports on it. I mean, props to the media recently for reporting on the drone strikes that killed 10 people. I think the New York Times did some pretty important investigation in that regard, which broke the story and brought a lot of attention to it. But a lot of people have also pointed out that that was only to try to, you know, take away from the withdrawal from Afghanistan to try to, you know, shit on the withdrawal from Afghanistan when previously they didn't cover any drone strikes gone, you know, errant. They didn't kill any or uh, cover any murderous drone strikes during the occupation. It was only during the, you know, somewhat hasty and disorganized withdrawal did they start really shining a light and you know looking into those details but the point is oftentimes the media won't even report on these drone strikes at all or if they do people won't even read it or it'll just get buried because it's not a hot topic uh, and these wars just become even less visible we have no idea what our military is doing and who knows how many countries all across the world yeah uh for sure and uh, there's a lot to kind of start to unpack here i think that uh, one of the big things you're right, we have seen a little bit of a slight shift uh, of covering some of these atrocities, uh, certainly more than we saw under the Obama era when it was just business as usual. Right. Uh, but I think that one of the key things that we should be thinking about as we do pivot and, you know, Kim uh, correctly identifies the fact that nobody will ever for the history of the world, probably unless there's large technological regressions uh, that boots on the ground kind of style. It, it's just so much more. Um, uh, effective as a sales pitch to the American people to just go over and, you know, oh, uh, we're going to send some remote drone pilots over there to do targeted assassinations, which I've been meaning to remind everybody is a total oxymoronic statement, right? Everything about a targeted assassination, that's how we kill lots of innocent people. That's how we bomb the wrong targets. I mean, it's such shoddy fucking evidence. I mean, there's even that there, it's so it's so well known and steeped in our culture that in Grand Theft Auto. All right, you literally have to assassinate a guy, and they're like, "Oh, he smokes a cigarette with his left hand. He's probably the guy." And you know, bam, you shoot him. Like that is how our actual government works. Okay, like, oh yeah, there's a fucking cab driver with a beard in, uh, you know, fucking Beirut. Yeah, we got to go get him. And it's like, oh, well, how many fucking cab drivers with beards in fucking Lebanon do you think there are? Right, like a fuck ton. So yeah, oh yeah, sorry, we got the wrong guy. Let's just grab twenty of them. Hopefully you know, we'll, we'll get the right one, you know, just cast a big net kind of a deal. Um, that isn't even targeted. As, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 it's it's so fucked. What happened was when Barack Obama was president, Michelle Flournoy was under secretary of state. Tony Blinken, who is now our current secretary of state, was under secretary of state. Uh, sorry, did I say Michelle Flournoy is under secretary of defense? 
Tony Blinken was under Secretary of State. Um, they left. They created West Exec Advisors. The whole goal of West Exec Advisors was to help big tech companies secure Department of Defense contracts. This is moving warfare away from the traditional, we need lots of tanks, we need lots of you know uh, equipment for boots on the ground, more towards high tech warfare. So this has been in the works for a while. And we even saw this happening and sort of real time in the Obama administration. He was moving away from these traditional invasions like in Iraq and in Afghanistan, and instead moving towards this, uh, these sorts of mixed, you know, he was kind of doing this mixed version of it in regards to Syria. So it was this mixture of boots on the ground and targeted attacks over the horizon drone warfare. But Syria was largely really sort of this testing ground for this new form of warfare that the administration was shifting towards and that the Department of Defense, the Pentagon was shifting towards. And they've pretty much successfully done this. I mean, they have openly stated you can you can get many quotes from Michelle Flournoy, from Tony Blinken, from Barack, uh, from uh, uh, Joe Biden and, and his ilk talking about moving towards these over the horizon targeted attacks. This is why I say wars are not really ending. They're just shifting. And unfortunately, they're shifting into a direction where there's really no oversight by the American people. Al Qaeda in Africa is not an actual threat to the United States. And in fact, I really do take issue with this idea that Islamism, that Islamists, excuse me, there is a difference between Islam and uh, and Islamic and Islamists. So Islamist is the nuanced term for, you know, like Al Qaeda, real radical fringe groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS and whatnot. And I take an issue with the thinking that these Islamists are the greatest threat facing the country today. I don't believe it. Uh, I don't think there's any evidence of this. If you're just going to continue to point to September 11th, an event that happened 20 years ago, it was extremely tragic, it was extremely terrible, and you're going to continue to point at that, which our government has, our Department of Defense has, the Pentagon has, continue to point at that one event to continue to justify endless wars, endless warfare, droning of civilians, killing of children. They continue to use that as the excuse for, well, we got to fight these terrorists. We got to fight these terrorists all around the world. They're such a threat. They're in Africa. You got to go all the way to Africa to fight them. I mean, does anybody notice how <laughs> this is a, a, a farce, a scam? It is just the, the rhetoric is to keep the military industrial complex going. It is to keep these contracts going. It is to continue to allow the president to have endless war powers that, are, that go unchecked. And furthermore, uh, when we really look at Africa and this and this now new attempts to destabilize Africa you have to ask yourself why why are we in Africa fighting al qaeda which i'm sure is a very unsophisticated cell of al qaeda that doesn't have any real ability to threaten the united states all the way where we are here today um, what is really going on there well we know china's trying to build their belt and road right all the way through africa they've been trying to build Africa, bring Africa up into the first world. They've been investing in Africa. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that is what's been going on. Whether you think there's some sinister motive or they're putting them in debt, you know, there's a lot of different ideas regarding that. But nonetheless, Africa is getting a heavy amount of investment from China. And the United States, you know, will do anything possible in order to destabilize the region in order to halt China's growth. So now you're participating, not in keeping America safe, not in really truly fighting an enemy that's an actual danger to me, my life as I walk out the front door, but you're just helping the military industrial complex and the globalists maintain power through destabilizing China's effort at expansion. So now, you know, Tulsi Gabbard goes to Africa to help these special ops uh, over the horizon style attacks that were crafted by Hillary Clinton, oddly enough. And uh, and then also lumps Iran into the whole group, which, by the way, doesn't belong there at all. Iran is a totally different ideology. Now, if she wants to pick a bone with Iran, fine. Do that separately. That's a, that's a separate if issue. Uh, throwing them in there is just uh, pandering to the Israeli base, is to say, well, you know, hey, Israel, I got your back. OK, if you want to pick a bone with Iran because you want to side with Israel, then go do that, but do that separately. They don't belong in this conversation. So that's also eyebrow raising about these statements. Um, uh, also, you know, for those of us who supported Tulsi Gabbard in her presidential campaign, this is very disappointing. This messaging is very disappointing. But when I look back at her campaign, I sit there and I think, well, maybe I just wasn't really listening, right? I mean, I heard re end regime change and these interventions uh, and, you know, end this sort of wasteful war 
And maybe I just thought that included these unnecessary destabilization over the horizon drone attacks. I just kind of assumed it included that. And maybe I was wrong on that. Clearly, I was wrong on that. I was wrong to think that it included that when now she's clearly coming out saying, no, 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 I'm for these targeted attacks. In fact, I participate in these targeted attacks, just went to Africa for four months to help with it. Um, so I'm, I'm not only okay with it, I'm for it, I'm participating in it. And I, I guess as myself, as someone who was uh, very supportive of the campaign, I perhaps didn't hear that message. And there were very, very staunch critics of her, uh, as many of you know, who were also um, following Tulsi, there were some very, very staunch, loud voices that came out saying, no, 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 she's actually all about droning. And many of us went to bat for Tulsi, and now we're eating crow. Uh, there's no other way to say it, you know? So yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, so uh, to answer your question from earlier about how familiar I was with Kim Iverson, I, you know, I, I vague, I like occasionally watch the uh, new rising. And that was when I, I became familiar with her in the first place. I, apparently, she has a really popular YouTube show that she's been doing for a long time. I wasn't aware of it. Uh, I think she's definitely the most poised for uh, good at the job as far as the new crop of of risers uh you know that they've brought in for sure so uh definitely uh think that she's you know got a nice perspective although i don't know a ton about her political or her politics long term uh she seems like she's an honest actor though after watching her kind of grapple with this reality you know gavin and i were those people and and you know sh surely we were leaning on some of the uh, you know t uh people that were had you know made the points that we'd learned from like the people like empire files actually michael brooks was really tremendous on tulsi gabbard i remember him doing a, just a savage takedown of her uh early on in her campaign uh and, and you know paved the way for my line of thinking to be like oh i think this lady would be pro drone strike and you know obviously gavin and i were really hard bernie guys but we always were like in the back of our minds like oh tulsi's you know you know not so bad uh she progressively outed herself as worse and worse and worse and i think that the uh best thing that you can do as somebody who you know was wrong about something in this space is just you have integrity and, and do exactly what Kim did, which she was like, you know, I'm eating this crow because I, you know, looked at the best part of your rhetoric and I wasn't as scrupulous on the worst part of your rhetoric. Right. And, you know, if Bernie Sanders has done some shit that Gavin and I've been like, you know, hey, we fucking don't support this. This is crappy, even though, you know, uh, you know, he's never come out and like outed himself as like a racist warmonger. But that fucking, <laughs> you know, um, but you know what I mean? I, I think it shows a lot of uh, humility. I think it shows a lot of character and it, and it makes me feel like I can at least trust your opinion in the sense that you're shooting the fucking straight shit to me. And that's what I value with people. That's why Gavin and I will come out here and be like, we fucked up or we're fucking and doubling down like you know you just have to know that you're getting the real shit from somebody if you're in this kind of work right like you know that's why um you know that's why people listen to new media as opposed to old media right if they were just looking for like whatever the fucking line was they would just turn on msnbc or fox news and get served that shit uh you know you gotta the heterodox thinking is what draws people to platforms like ours then i think for sure that kem uh, is a heterodox thinker and, and i appreciate that and i think we need more of that on the left yeah, absolutely. And I think one of our commenters, A. Rowe, here says it best. I love Kim Iverson. Her show's pretty good. I definitely don't agree with all of her takes, but she's absolutely coming from a place of honesty and good faith. And that's something that I think is really evident. And I don't agree with all of her takes either. Um, she's had some takes that I hard disagree with. But um, I think this clip and others that I've seen are evidence that she is willing to you know, evolve in her thinking. She's not demagogic. She's not reactionary. And clearly she is you know, now willing to grapple with and admit her failings when it came to Tulsi Gabbard and defending her even in the light of evidence that was there from the beginning, because that's another thing. We got a comment on uh, our YouTube video the other day addressing the Tulsi situation. And, and someone said like, oh, you guys weren't vindicated here because you'd been calling out Tulsi for a long time. You know, she was good. It's only now that she's bad. So like, oh, back then when you guys were criticizing her, it was unjust. Only now is it just because now she's made this pivot and, you know, she's different now. I say no, she's not different. She's always been this Tulsi Gabbard. This is the real Tulsi Gabbard. Will the real Tulsi Gabbard please stand up? She just did.
She just fucking did. This is the real Tulsi Gabbard. She has been the entire time. And the only reason why it didn't seem that way is because she was strategically trying to win a Democratic primary in which she thought she had a specific lane. Uh, and there were certain things she didn't think she could say, for example, coming out this strongly in favor of drone strikes, you know, this blatantly apologizing for and defending our militaristic intentions abroad, et cetera, et cetera. But I think this is very clearly who she's always been. Again, earlier, she just thought she saw a lane somewhere else. And, you know, even though she probably didn't actually think she had a chance of winning the Democratic primary, she certainly knew that within that electorate, within that voting pool, within especially the Bernie Sanders dominated young fan base of, you know, Democrat voters in 2020, she thought she had to, you know, walk a certain line. And, and she did that for a while. Only now is she really going full mask off, right wing grifter. Um, warmonger, et cetera, which again is so ironic considering how she painted herself. And as Kim points out, it's ironic. It makes it even more hollow and ironic how she, you know, came after Hillary Clinton and called her the queen of all warmongers when now she's embracing the exact militaristic strategy pioneered by Hillary Clinton. So uh, total hypocrisy. And it proves that unlike Kim Iverson, who is a good faith actor and an honest commentator, Tulsi Gabbard is just a grifter. It's all about her career. She's clearly now just trying to, you know, get a show on Fox News or something, or maybe run as a Republican candidate in an election down the line. 